6. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And the good and great news of Romans 10, 6-15 is that salvation in Christ is available. If we are people on a sinking ship, Christ is hovering over the waters to save us out of the raging sea. That's the good news of verses 8 to 13. From there the passage moves on. And the problem asked of us from there is then how can people be saved without having the gospel preached to them? And the solution is that gospel workers need sending. So that's what we're looking at tonight. Firstly, that salvation is available in verses 8 to 9. In this section, Paul outlines the message of faith that we proclaim beginning halfway through, through verse 8. That is the message concerning faith we proclaim. If we declare with our mouths Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts God, God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Now if someone asked you how to become a Christian, how many sentences do you think you would use? Paul's answer here is really, really tight. Just one sentence. If we declare with our mouths Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. It sounds incredibly simple. And in some ways it is. Being saved is as simple as declaring Jesus as Lord and believing in our heart God raised him from the dead. Now of course, if we truly believe this, um, it will be followed with a life under the rule of Christ by faith. But it is an incredibly simple way to begin. There's nothing magnificently great that we do. Anyone can be saved. And the reason anyone can be saved is because God has done what is required for us. Jesus has come from heaven to conquer sin and death. He's fought the powers of evil and he has won. All Christ asks, asks of us is that we take his hand and be led into his kingdom, confessing and believing in Christ our Lord. And this is the word that is near us in our hearts and mouths that we proclaim. It's great news. Salvation is available. It's wonderfully, wonderfully available. Who is it for? When I walk up to people on campus, um, I'm often surprised who is open to the gospel and who isn't. Many people, I think, will be open to hearing about Christ aren't, um, whether they've had a Christian or a non-Christian upbringing. Other people, I think, won't be open, surprisingly are, and I can never really tell. Who is salvation available for? Well, for everyone and anyone who calls on Christ's name. That's what the next four verses tell us. 
each verse beginning with a conjunction building on the previous verse leading us towards a climax in verse 13. Three times the theme is repeated. Verse 11, Paul tells us salvation is for anyone who believes. Verse 12, that's the salvation is for Jews and Gentiles, the two categories of people for Paul. And finally, for everyone in verse 13. This was radical news for people of Paul's day. Gentiles were considered completely illegitimate candidates for citizenship in God's kingdom. They were a different class, a people unclean. But Paul hounds his point home in this context, and he grounds his quotes in the Old Testament with Joel 2.32, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For those throughout the world, in the farthest places like Africa, the Philippines, or the little place on the map uh, called New Zealand, salvation is available for all. Have you ever considered some people are just too far from God, too rich, too poor, too Asian, these days too white, maybe just in a different social, social sphere than the, uh, the Christian world that we live in? Paul tells us that salvation is available for all because in verse 11, Jesus is Lord of all. and He richly blesses all who call on him. People from whatever background or belief, secular, Buddhist, Islamic, Christian background, salvation is for anyone and everyone who calls on Christ's name. Now, our postmodern pluralistic um, society these days is very, very sneaky. It's very sneaky. It says, whatever is true for you is true, and whatever is true for me is true. Now, I think that is a lovely sentiment, but it's also incredibly uh, deceptive and dangerous. Truth that is only true for you is not truth at all. That's opinion or imagination. And we can't afford to base our lives, our ideas of life and of life after death on mere opinion or imagination. We need someone who can speak with authority on the topic, someone who knows everything about life and what's beyond it, someone who's been through death and come back to life, appeared to then more than 500 people, and we know his name is Jesus. With deep conviction, we lovingly hold forth his name, imploring people with all the energy and skill we possess to trust in him. Because salvation is available for all, but it's only effective for some. Let me say that again because it's so important. Salvation is available for all. But it's only effective for some, for those who take note of their sin and its consequences and cry out to Jesus. And if there's anyone here tonight who hadn't done that uh, yet, today, now is the time to do that, to call on the Lord for salvation. We and the whole world have been in this terrible way, heading towards destruction, death and judgment before a holy God. We've been floating along, enjoying the delicacies of life, and all the while beneath the surface, things, these things have been going wrong. There's a titanic problem of sin that's been at work in our lives. The hull has been breached, and we've been sinking, and no one and nothing but Christ can save us from God's pending judgment. Christ is our only means for that salvation. And the great news for us is that he hasn't just come to bring us a meagre form of salvation, as if we become eternal peasants. Christ has wonderfully, magnificently come to rescue us and bring us to the secure place of his home. We're not just saved, but blessed. And we're not just blessed, but richly blessed. We read in verse 12, Adopted, loved, deeply treasured in God's household. 
cleansed and restored, forgiven and granted eternal life. In Christ, salvation is available, rich and extravagant blessing for wretched sinners like me and for you too. For anyone and everyone who would call on Christ's name. That's the first point um, that we've looked at. The second in verses 14 to 15 is that gospel workers need sending. So far we've had uh, four conjunctions leading us to see that salvation is available for all. And now we move on to four questions for how cans that reveal God's crazy plan to use people like you and me to bring salvation to the world. Verse 14, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? All who call on the Lord will be saved, but how can they call on Christ if people haven't put their trust in him when they haven't heard of his name? To be saved, people first need to hear and know um, of our Saviour. We need information, but not just information. We need the personal truth of God's message to hear, believe and call on the Lord. And verse 14 asks and ends with this question, how can people hear without someone preaching to them? There's no easy answer. Because God's crazy plan is to use us to proclaim his message to people through preaching. In Mark 1.38, after healing lots of people, many people come searching for him. Jesus says, let us go to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. That is why I have come, says Jesus, to preach. The first or primary way the gospel is taken to the world is through preaching or just as accu accurately proclamation of the gospel. Just give that a few seconds to think to sink in. Because interestingly, that's not actually where Paul lands in our passage. His string of how cans don't actually finish with the preaching, but the sending of preachers to the world. And I find this really amazing. In evangelism, Paul doesn't focus primarily on the preacher, but on the church sending preachers. It makes sense, though. We're not uh, lone rangers out there in the world where people called together in Christ in accordance with God's great plan and purpose. While not all of us may be evangelists with a capital E, uh, preachers come from within the church. They're called, discipled and trained in the community of believers uh, by, and by Christian teaching. And... They are sent into the world, not just raised up, but propelled and sent out to the community in Wyndham, to New Zealand and to the ends of the earth. Individuals can't just do this on their own. While I was working in Gisborne for a big company called Lead Brand, I realised the limitations um, of trying to do it all yourself. Um, I'd, I'd try and sort of start up conversations with people while I was working. Uh, but I found just when you start to get to the juicy bits, I'd start slowing down on my work uh, and have to pause the conversation till another time. Over lunch, I sort of had about 10 minutes. Um, we had sort of shortish lunches uh, and then alongside other things to, to start a conversation, move to the, to the topic of God uh, and share the message about Jesus. And I just found it wasn't enough. After, after work, people had uh, just one thing on their mind going home. How can a preacher 
go out to people in different places where the gospel isn't known and hold on to um, their job? How can they focus on effective gospel communication to people cross cultures and be held to other obligations and responsibilities? This is one of the reasons why Paul talks about the need for raising up and sending people to proclaim the gospel to people throughout the world. We see God doing this in Acts uh, 13, 2-3. Here the Holy Spirit directly tells those in Antioch to set aside Paul and Barnabas for this work. The New Testament gives other examples of people being um, sent out and working in the harvest fields with Paul and others um, to different capacities and in different ways. And one of the things we'd like you to consider tonight is how, how are you helping preachers be raised up and sent out into the world? Firstly, how are you helping the work in Wintham, uh, in your local churches, um, in the evangelistic efforts, and, and all, the, all that the church does here, and spurring one another on in Christ and in, in his teachings? Secondly, how are you praying um, for gospel workers? Jesus tells us to pray to the Lord of the harvest to send workers into it. Also encouraging, challenging, and financially supporting other people. And thirdly, how are you considering um, if God might be calling you to get trained up with the gospel to the world? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, we read in verse 15. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Feet are really helpful. Uh, they help us travel. We can walk and run with our feet. There's all kinds of shoes we can put on our feet. Imelda Marcos, who is wife of the President of the Philippines for many years, is reported to have 3,000 shoes but the most special, the most beautiful feet are the feet that bring God's good news, that travel over mountains carrying God's precious message to other people. Salvation is available for all, and gospel workers need sending. If there's anyone here today who hasn't called on Christ for salvation, please do so today with every part of your being, asking Jesus to save you from your sin and its consequences and watch as Jesus comes into your life like the brilliance of 10,000 sons. For those of us in Christ, we'd like to encourage you to consider how you can help the work of Christ here in Wintham and abroad. How are you using what God has put in your hands and your heart to help God's message go out? We'll keep thinking about these things. In the last six minutes, I'll be sharing about how God has been at work in our lives, our call and plans to go to the Philippines. As I mentioned at the start,